The next group of planes we're going to look at are router planes. So the word router really it, it means just to clean out or scoop out uh, between two edges, to route out. And that's exactly what these planes are designed for, uh, to scoop out uh, across the grain uh, waste material in a, in a, a dado. As we were mentioning before, uh, they're quite often used to clean up dados and things like that. And I have three styles of uh, planes here. The simplest, maybe the oldest style, is something called an old woman's tooth. And uh, this one is particularly nicely made. Um, often they, they used, uh, uh, craftsmen would use a plow plane iron from their plow plane as the cutter so they could choose different widths of irons. And it's just set into a block of wood and uh, the, the, um, it may be just a circular hole here for the chip relief and all that um, and some mecha mechanism for capturing the iron there. But a very simple router plane and clearly you can adjust the iron up and down quite easily for whatever depth of cut. So those are called old woman's teeth. Uh, slightly pejorative term, but um, charming nonetheless. Uh, and Stanley made a, um, a, a couple of different kinds of routers. Uh, the 71 style, like this, sort of, sort of larger plane, and then a, a mini version of that, um, the 271. Um, and they, they each have their own particular uses, and I'll, I'll, I'll go through that in just a second. But when we look at this, this router plane here, we can see there are two handles and a, a sole that rests on the work like that. Um, and then the cutter, right here you can see the cutter protrudes through the sole like that. And the cutter, uh, the ability to adjust the cutter, there's a collar here that you can loosen. And then you can screw the cutter up or down to regulate whatever depth of cut you want. And once you've set it to the correct position, then you can tighten the collar up again. So there's no way of uh, setting an exact depth on here uh, other than by eye or by measurement. Um, and, uh, um, but that, that's how, the, how that's set right there. They did come with a variety of cutters, and I've got three examples here. One of them is in the, in the uh, router also already. A narrower cutter, and then a cutter with a, a spear point type edge like this. So typically they made three cutters. The spear point makes a very slicing cut, so it very, makes a very fine surface at the bottom. But uh, you, can, uh, you, you can find these at old tool shows and things like that. Often a router that you find in a flea market will just have one cutter in it, and these two will be gone. Uh, that's not a problem. As long as you have a cutter narrow enough for the uh, uh, narrow groove you're going to cut, you're, you're in business. Um, the other thing uh, that they had was uh, uh, fences, and you may or may not find these fences with the router. There was a fence with a straight edge and a fence with a curved edge so that you could work these, um, this routing action along the uh, parallel to the edge of a straight grain, a long grain cut, or you could work around a curved surface, like for example a, a window or a circular window or, or a, a table edge or something like that that has a, a long curve on it. So it rests on just two points here and you can work your way around a curve. So those were screwed to the sole at one of these two screw points right here. Clearly they're reversible and you could move them in or out to have some, some level of adjustment about how far in you wanted. So you can find these probably floating around separately but very seldom you actually find them on the router itself, they may be missing. And in reality, when you're using a router, uh, almost invariably you're using it to clean out a groove that's already been established. So fences are, are not necessarily that, that, that necessary. There's usually nothing wrong with these planes in terms of, uh, uh, of their um, uh, construction. They're a tool with practically no moving parts. Um, so sometimes the handles might be cracked, but you can easily turn a handle, a uh, replacement handle and all that. There is one difference between this router and uh, another style that Stanley made, and this particular router has what's called an open throat. You can see here that the casting does not come 
all the way across. So when you're working with a, a, a piece of wood, on a, if you're working, a, say, cutting a hinge mortise or something like that on a narrow piece of wood, there's no real support here like that to give the router support. So Stanley did come up with a, uh, uh, a um, device here that you could, they could uh, clamp in there and set that and so they could effectively close the throat. So working on edges like that, they would have support all the way across the width of the, of the router for making that cut. They also made a router with a closed throat. Um, in other words, the casting went straight across like here. I think that router was called a 71 and a half. This is called a 71. Um, so uh, the 71 and a half is a closed throat um, router. This little uh, mini router embodies both aspects. You can see that here. One side is open, one side is closed. These little routers here were perfectly designed for cutting the shallow, narrow mortars for hinges and whatnot on the edge of uh, doors or cabinets and things like that. Um, and the iron can be dropped out and put on one side or the other depending on whether you wanted it open or closed. And there, there may be times when you want an open throat. Um, they basically came with a single iron. Um, and, um, but nowadays, um, uh, tool companies are making both this style of router and this style here, uh, uh, modern versions with enhancements. Uh, both Lee Nielsen and, and uh, Veritas make uh, router planes. Um, and they often make these small routers with a variety of, um, of uh, widths of cutters so that you can have you can cut very small grooves, for example, banding, uh, inlay type uh, uh, cuts and whatnot. Yeah. This is why these router bits often are missing. They just fall right on out. So, I screw that in there all the way. Um, and later on we'll talk about cutting a joint with a router. This is Joshua Farnsworth. If you're interested in learning traditional woodworking with hand tools, visit my website at woodandshop.com where you can find free video tutorials, workshop tours of amazing traditional woodworkers, and tool buying guides. You can ask questions and share your projects with thousands of woodworkers on my free traditional woodworking forum. Make sure you subscribe to my regular blog posts and also check out my 10 steps for getting started in traditional woodworking. Enjoy!